Welcome to Deep Dive Film School. I'm Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash hear, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the spaces and places that people what? Find good media. That's mm. right. Our most popular platforms are YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. So join us there. Give us five stars uh, on iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcasts as well. All right. This this is uh, one of my favorite times of year. Sundance. Sundance. Yep. Sundance. <laughs> God, <laughs> for the long time good. listeners. Yes, that's, that's uh, a good pull there. Uh, You've you know, been going for how many years now? This is my 25th year, if you good can believe it. God. And my, I believe, 16th as a member of the press mm -hmm. through the podcast mm -hmm. and other various platforms and stuff like that. But yes. it was a great year. It really was. Uh, almost all the films I saw, I saw 27, oh um, were good to great. Um, How do you even remember 27? <laughs> I couldn't even. If I see two movies in a week, I'm like, was that in the first one? Yeah, was you kind of just crank it out. Okay. But, you know, I've been doing it long enough. That's fine. And also, it's a lot easier now when the last half of the festival is online. I can just sit in my house and crank them out. I guess that's true. So that's yeah. a little easier. But it was a really good year. Uh, it made me wonder how much of this is a backlash of stuff like COVID. Mm -hmm. Productions halting during COVID, maybe finally getting done or shot. Maybe the writer strike had an effect as well for some of these things oh, as well. Oh, sure. If that makes sense. So, um, so you know, but... It, Great year. I like seriously so much good stuff. Um, you know, some of the themes, I like to talk about themes before I get into my top five and I'll get into my favorites of, of the ones I saw. But some of the themes I saw this year, AI docs are coming for you. Oh, God. They're I can everywhere. only imagine. And there was a, a really good one called Eternal You that I watched that was a, basically about creating an AI of a dead, you know, like your dead person I saw or something whatever. about this. It's like that, that episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> it's very, very close. <laughs> yeah. It is. Anyway, so very fascinating. And also it just has that natural contrast with AI mm -hmm. of like, yeah, this is really interesting and cool. And like the possibilities are endless, but there's also the like, who's responsible for this? Is this ethically right? Yeah, what's um, Jeff Goldblum's line in Jurassic Park? You never, st you scientists never stop to ask yourself if you should do this. Exactly, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Anyways, but it's obviously blowing up. It's huge now. Um, but there was a, just a lot of really brave original stuff this year that people mm. just fucking went for it, which is why why I love going to Sundance is because you're going to get that kind of stuff over time and whatever you you kind of make friends with people and you're in the same theaters and whatever and i've over the years made friends with a guy uh, he, he's a managing editor at uh managing editor at robertebert.com um so he you know he oh. basically runs that website his name is brian T uh telrico and there was a, a a film that i sat next to him at this year called Sas sasquatch sunset and this is a totally silent film uh where you are like going through the four seasons with this family of Sasquatches in the middle of wherever. You don't really ever know. This is a live action yes. film? Yes. Jesse Eisenberg is one of, is like the dad. And uh, <sighs> anyway, so it's, it's Do they look like Henry, Harry and the Hendersons? Do it's they a little different. Like... They have these little like long skinny penises. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> but, but it's absolutely original and entertaining and funny. And like, uh, it wasn't my favorite thing. And, uh, but at the beginning of the, at, at the beginning, as we were chatting at the beginning, he was like, What's the over under on how many people walk out? 30. What, what would you say? And I'm like, oh, it's over 30. <laughs> and so I was counting the whole movie. Whoa. Now we were we were in a, a press venue. So, you know, some people are like, oh, this isn't one for, uh, for me, or I want to go see something else. Or, but yeah. And, and he even wrote about me and that conversation in his of review the over of under. Sasquatch Sunset. So well, well, check let me, it out. Let me ask you something just based upon that. Um, like on the years where you do see something that is like, pretty out there or original or a real game changer mm -hmm. and you see it early in that week mm -hmm. does that tend to color the rest of the week versus if you see like yeah, totally. a really sad somber serious movie or i don't know i'm just thinking of like no you i mean know. honestly those first couple days you're just cranking them out and hoping you're going to see something good right and then yeah you have favorites and those inform the rest like like okay What's the next level here? Yeah, and I'm going to talk this. about some great stuff. <laughs> so, um, and then you, of course, get your classic Sundance stuff as far as the themes go. Yeah. It's all great. You know, they have, like, uh, great music docs, you know, biopics. I saw a great one called As We Speak about 
uh, the weaponization of rap, rap lyrics. Uh, mm. That's excellent. And it wasn't just like your normal doc. They made it so well. Um, Soderbergh pulls off a haunted house movie. Um, really? Th- that was excellent. I really liked it. That was called Presence. Was um, I'm sure uh, it was good. It was just it, it was just a solid haunted house movie in a huh. in a total different perspective than you've seen before. That's cool. Basically, well, from the perspective of to, the ghost, when, the whole oh, time. Wow. But well, when he wants but to, he's he creepy. Shoots, he shoots it and everything, and he's you know he's floating inside the house. And you, anyways, did you, you like Unsane? Because I like it when he goes creepy like that. Um, wasn't a huge fan, but this one I really liked. Mm, okay. Um, and then you know, wonderful coming of age stuff. There's a one about this Taiwanese American boy named Dee Dee had probably one of the funniest lines I've seen in a movie in like five years. I laughed my ass off. Okay. Um, so great stuff all around. Uh, you know. Just classic themes and also some new stuff popping in there. So anyways, let's get into my five favorites here. Uh, I'll start off with my number five. This recently just got picked up by Netflix. I knew it would get picked up. It's pretty obvious. But I thought this was a really, it stood out as just a highly entertaining movie. Um, And you'll know why in a second. But uh, it's also a great vehicle for conversation. And it's the movie Will and Harper. This is about Will Ferrell and his longtime friend from oh, 30 years yeah. ago. I saw something uh, about w- this. Was a writer on SNL uh, who transitioned to be a woman and is named Harper now. And this is the first, like, all the things that he, uh, she used to do, can't do anymore or doesn't feel comfortable in their own skin doing it. And so they go cross country doing all the things that she wants to do together. And of course, you have this very easy, relatable straight cis male and Will Ferrell that everyone loves. And he can sit there and be funny, but also ask the questions that the audience is wondering about. And it was just so well done. And there's obvious certain moments inside of it that were like, know if it was like a little teaser i think it was a little teaser for it that he was being so like nakedly open Mm -hmm. of like i've never had someone in my life who was trans and i don't know anything about it Mm -hmm. so i'm a huge old idiot so i hope it does well and obviously you're gonna have a certain section of people that just won't even give the time of day whatever those that that is what it is, but uh, I They'll hope be I fine. hope there's I hope a bunch it, of stuff for them to watch. <laughs> I hope it's I hope it's uh, I hope it does really well. And Netflix has it, so uh, hopefully a lot of people see it. That's awesome. All right, my fourth movie uh, is the movie Kneecap. Do you know who Kneecap is? No. Have you ever heard of Kneecap? Okay, so no. Kneecap is this Irish hip hop band, and the movie is about them becoming a band. But the it's a biopic about their band. And they're playing themselves in this movie, and they're very debaucherous. And I'm sure a lot of this happened, but basically around 2017, 18, they became a band. But the whole reason behind their band is they wanted to speak traditional Irish uh, language. Gaelic. Gaelic. Yeah. And uh, no one does oh it anymore, God. but they wanted to make they're it. They're rapping in Gaelic? So they rap in Gaelic <laughs> and, and English. Shit. And it's fucking awesome. That's amazing. It's so good. And uh, watching it, not knowing who these guys were, it was wild. But they kind of became these civil rights people because they were pushing against British, you know, Oppression, oppression yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that, wanting to speak their original language, even though they're not allowed to anymore. So they created this. They're like the Irish Beastie Boys, <laughs> and like, um, and, and uh, you've probably seen like so the the main uh, one of the guys is uh, kind of the keyboard like electronic guy who kind of does all the beats and everything. He's actually a music teacher, but he didn't want to expose himself during this time, and uh, he's the member of the band who has a full like beanie full face beanie on okay he plays shows with the beanie on the whole time still does to this day but a fascinating fun hilarious story that just wraps in their amazing music and kind of their story but it's also them playing themselves so it just it was just a wild fun movie and i absolutely had a great time watching it check out kneecap uh 
even if it's just on Spotify or something, so good. Wow. Um, so That's so check, cool. Check if that rapping one. in Gaelic. Yeah. It's amazing. So it's kind of half Gaelic, half English. English. So okay. I, I can show you a song later, but wow. uh, definitely check them out. Okay. All right. My number three, this one just got picked up by IFC Films. This one I love. This was at my number one for a long time. Um, and uh, pretty much my favorite throughout the fest. And it's just like this wonderful dramedy called Ghost Light. And um, it's kind of a play on Romeo and Juliet. This old construction worker is going through something and finds a theater troupe that he, like all these kind of weird theater troupe and becomes this thing. And it becomes so much more than what you think it's going to. And is really modern, great take of a movie and a cast that I've never seen before. Nobody in it's it. Really. An American film? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and uh, but Ghost Light, uh, but absolutely great dramedy. Um, and I, I just don't want to say too much on how they use it. And I'm I'm gonna be the same way with my other films because there's only so much you want to say about them for people to get excited. But check out Ghost Light. Hopefully, it gets a nice run. But everyone was buzzing. Um, about this movie. Wow. Um, okay. After they saw it, it was just kind of one of those like crowd pleasers that will make you cry, but also laugh your ass off. Mm. So, um, really loved it. Uh, the whole cast, everything about it was great. Um, my second favorite movie is Jesse Eisenberg's directed a film called A Real Pain. Um, it's him and Kieran Culkin um, going to Poland and visiting their uh, their grandmother's house and and where she lived and everything during World War II and mm. what happened and basically reclaiming their Jewish faith and kind of trying to understand what happened. And it's like a trip that she wanted them to go on. But I mean, you know, Kieran Culkin's on like a huge fucking run right oh now. Oh my God. And, yes. the, and, and, um, it's so well done. He directed a movie called when you finish saving the world a couple Sundances ago, it had, um, uh, the kid, one of the kids from stranger things in it. It was just kind of blah. I, w I was excited because I like Jesse Eisenberg. I think he's a he's an interesting guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I was pretty underwhelmed with the first one. This is completely blew me out of the water. He got all the bugs out of his system yeah. with the first also, one. Also, he's just telling a much, much more personal story. Right. Like, all of this is very relatable, relatable to what he's gone through. And having Kieran Culkin next to it being this very complex character who, you know, is, is kind of his character from succession but like a much lazier like kind of but also like you know just saying shit to disrupt people yeah right? but yeah. It's, he's, he's also, very good he's as also that like character. he's also like someone that like can suddenly change everyone in a room right does and, eisenberg still have the long skinny penis like he did in the no they, big they foot movie? he was wearing pants in this okay <laughs> Um, just a little distracting. The rest of the movie is very dramatic, but then he has this little. But again, it's a, it is dramatic and dealing with some very heavy issues, and that's a hard balance. But it's also again very funny. Their relationship, mm. um, the things they go through, the mm. way they question things, and really call people out and make you as an audience member question what they're going through. Fascinating, mm. wonderful film. A real pain. Check it out. A real pain. Yes. Okay. All right, and then my last one here. Uh, this one it was. This made, is number one? Yeah, this made for one. Sherlock okay. too. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. It's an A24 film called uh, A Different Man. And this is Sebastian Stan. Uh -huh. And um, this is the one I, it's hard to talk about everything <laughs> that happens because you just have to see it. Okay. To, to see the reveal. But it's like if, it's like if Almodovar directed Elephant Man. Jesus. But, it was, but it's like... Uh, <laughs> There's also like some Salieri in there as well. Okay. Um, I, I, you just have to see it to understand what I'm talking about. But one of the main, the main characters, the, the Sebastian Stan at the beginning of the movie has neurofibromatosis. Do you know what that is? Yeah. It's what so the it, guy like, from Elf under this, it's got what the guy from under the skin has. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in this movie, Adam Pearson. That, oh, he, he's the one, actor is in the movie. Okay, yeah, okay. He's okay. one of the people in this movie. So, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That guy. Um, so he's one of the characters in this movie. And, you know, let's just say he gets an operation. It, it turns out much differently than he expects in the most wonderful, crazy, original ways. Mm. Um, again, I don't want to say too much, but the skin I live in, I thought about that a lot. Okay. Um, and then, of course, Elephant Man, there's stuff wow. there. But then also Amadeus. And, like, so, like, there's, you just you just have to see it. A I different can't say very man. Much. A different man. Sebastian Stan. A I love A24. I love Sebastian Stan. Yeah. I, I love, I mean, thinking of something like Fresh. 
Uh, Adam Pearson's really the star here, though. Really? Yeah, okay. he's amazing. That's so um, cool. So really, like some great quality original stuff that I'm we glad see to this see year. him acting again because I know that with Under the Skin he was a producer, mm. and they wrote him into the story. And I think at first he was really trepidatious about doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's so cool to see that he's acting more and that this story sort of hinges around. You will fucking love this movie. Okay. You absolutely will so love excited. this movie. Um, but really, <laughs> again, a great year for Sundance 2024. Had a blast. Um, was able to see a ton of good stuff. Um, it's always a kind of pleasure and one of the fun things I do every year. Um, and I don't know. It's just kind of my... It's, it's my, your thing, It's my man. Super Bowl. It's your... <laughs> it's your su superb owl. <laughs> That's right. So, um, yeah, thank you for listening. Check out those movies. Uh, there are plenty more where that came from. If you want to hit us up on what you saw at Sundance, please do. Would love to hear what everyone thought. There's a, seriously a dozen more I could talk about, but those were the ones that really stuck with me throughout the fest and still thinking about today. But, That's uh, awesome. Anyways, that's the show, everyone. Thank you for watching. Next week, we're going to do that one scene from Karate Kid. So make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah. Follow us on this journey. Uh, we're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. If you want to do those things, uh, hit the bell icon. If you're on YouTube, give us five stars if you're listening on podcasts. But uh, we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye, you guys.